It's one of the things that was our big goal, get to a bowl game. Uh, the Michigans, the Ohio States, the Alabamas, they all go to a bowl game. We want to put our little name right there. We want to go to a bowl game every year. The Peach Bowl Team Selection Committee is unanimous in extending a bid to West Virginia University to play my bowl class. Congratulations. As he accepted the bid on behalf of the players, he had led to an 8-3 record. Don Nealon could not have been happier. At least not until they flexed their muscles for a national television audience and trounced Florida 26-6 on New Year's Eve. Oh, he told, he told us, they got this David Galloway guy over there, and he's going to just rip our offensive line apart. You, Keith Jones, he's going to beat you so bad your mother's not going to know you. He was saying all kind of stuff to us, and we all started teasing Keith. Yeah, Keith, you're going to get your butt whooped. Keith went out and played against David Galloway, held his own, and I think beat him. And the game started to rain, and we were just... We, they, they didn't give us a chance. And we said, you know what? We're just as good as they are. We can beat them. And we had a mud turtle in the game, Mickey Walzak, one of the toughest guys you want to see run the ball. Wasn't very fast, wasn't really shifty, but when he put his head down, he was going north and south. So we played that game and we beat them and nobody believed we beat them. Because everybody's like, they had, Wilbur Marshall was on that team, Wayne Peace. There's there a bunch of guys that played in the league. They were all on that team, and we came out and we beat them in the Peach Bowl. But that game there, I think it was 105 degrees, he had a temperature of 102, and he played. <sighs> You're talking about sick. I knew he was sick, but Dennis Folk said, suck it up, Tally, you're gone. Dennis handled, Dennis handled Daryl for me. I'm like, I can't do this. Go to the sideline, I'm sitting there, I got my head down. Dennis comes off the sideline, and it goes up one side of me, down the other. I looked at him and said, look, I'm sick. He looked at me and said, I don't care. You gotta play. I play. You ain't Daryl Talley, I know. You know blah, 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 blah. Me and him went at it for, I don't know, that whole series of offenses on the field. Went back out there, I played. And somewhere in their hearts, his young men found the courage. And when the final score went down, they knew that they had won. You got to know you can hold them. No, you can't fold them. That was an amazing, amazing victory. And as I look back over the transformation of the West Virginia football program, I think in 1980, we brought to them big time football, but in 1982, when we beat Oklahoma, that put us in a different category. All of a sudden, hey, these guys can play because we had beaten Florida and Oklahoma back to back. Dennis had some like, 20 tackles in that game, he played his butt off. But that game, I, I didn't know what to do. I mean, I hurt so bad, but I knew I couldn't let my teammates down. I had to go back in the game. I went back in and we finished the game. And that's the game I knew that Daryl Talley was gonna be All-American, not the Pittsburgh game. Not, I mean, it ain't like he had an outstanding game. But when you go out there with a temperature of 102 and you still perform, that makes you a great player. Backyard Brawl was just, in my opinion, it's two schools that are very close together in color and size and makeup. A lot, they, they actually go after a lot of the same kids. And it's just the idea that they got the same colors on you got on. That ain't right. Somebody needs to take them colors off. And I was one of those people that I believed in having turf wars. I, I'm going to get you out of my area. I don't care. I used to look at it and go, that's a funny story. I used to laugh because I grew up in a city. I had not seen a lot of the stuff that I'd seen here in West Virginia. 
and I just laughed. I thought it was funny. And then as I started playing guys, and then I meet them in the off season or all, somewhere around town, or in Pittsburgh, in Marino's case, and he used to call us hoopies and hillbillies. And I got, oh, I used to get so mad. He would call me, what, what are you? What are you? And that's when I started really giving Pitt garbage. I, I remember that game very vividly because going into it, I said to myself, not only are we playing maybe the best team in the country from a physical standpoint, but we got to go there. And we had maybe five or six really good players. The rest of the guys were, were you know, they were our Mountaineers, but they weren't going to go into the next level or anything like that. But uh, that game was a fantastic football game. The pit game, I had tried everything I could think of to beat Pitt during my whole collegiate career. I mean, I had games where I had 18, 20 tackles, a couple pass breakups, a sack, a couple tackles for a loss. I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I had to figure out some other way to do it. Pitt had as good of football players as you were gonna find anywhere in the country. We played them one year when they graduated 19 players they got drafted. I mean, almost all of them went to the NFL. And uh, Daryl Talley was a one-man wrecking crew against that team. We played them, and I was like, you know what, I'm still going to play everybody. I'm going to play Hugh Green, I'm going to play Ricky Jackson, and I'm going to play Delbert. I'm going to play everybody, because you know why? This game's on national TV, and guess what? You put me on national TV, I'm going to show my butt. I used to tell my old man, I said, Pop, you ever put me on national TV, I'm going to show my butt. They ain't gonna have to worry about it. So, I was on the punt block team. Blocked the punt, picked it up, scored. I ran Brian Thomas down from about, he had a good 40 yard, or 30 yard lead on me. I came from the other side, caught him, ran him. I, I just refused to lose. Darryl Talley is one of the greatest football players ever to wear the old gold and blue. Only time will tell, but one thing for sure, outside linebacker may never be played the same. He came to West Virginia, a gangly prospect from Cleveland. He left a six foot four inch hulk. Halley ran faster than most of the backs, hit harder than any lineman, and played with more intensity than words can describe. A consensus All-America selection, West Virginia's first since the 50s, Halley is a sure bet for professional glory. I can remember people telling me, after I played Pitt, Cedric says, you don't get drafted. I don't get drafted? What you talking about, man? I ain't going no dang on Army. He said, no, you gonna get drafted in the NFL. Yeah, right, man, keep going. We're gonna play, we're gonna win. That was it, plain and simple. I, I was not having anything else. 